Hey, I'm Amanda from Trifecta Fitness. We're proud to be Clarksville's new Get Fit headquarters. Trifecta Fitness is a state-of-the-art spin and strength training studio. Our spin studio is truly one of a kind in this area, complete with 20 state-of-the-art live fitness bikes and an incredible sound system. Our strength training is done in small groups of six or fewer, and all of our strength and spin classes are scalable for every level of experience. Come see us in the heart of Clarksville, just behind Mapco at the corner of Old Trenton Road and Wilma Rudolph Boulevard. Call us for more info at 931-542-6265 or download our Trifecta Fitness app for a full list of upcoming classes. Fit Nation, we are a show founded by veterans and hosted by veterans and a military spouse. Our mission is to get people to tell their story to the world. If you're an author, share your tips with the Miss Foundation. If you're a musician or actor, our audience needs to know how they too can get into the business. Coaches, we love our coaches. Come on, share some of your tips with the audience to help them become better versions of themselves. If you're a corporate leader or an entrepreneur, come on and share how you did it and how hard you have fought for success. If you're a veteran, first responder, or Gold Star family, we would love to have you come on and just share your story with the Misfit Nation. We always have time for you. Reach out, we will get you on. If you are feeling down, alone, or starting to see the darkness, stop. Think about those who are around you. You are not alone. You will be missed. If you feel like your problems will be a burden to those in your inner circle or are embarrassed to share that with them, please dial 988. If you are a veteran, take option one. We need you to keep pushing forward. Don't make a permanent solution to a temporary problem. If you're a new listener, welcome to the Misfit Nation. Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast apps, and also on our YouTube channel, at the underscore Misfit Nation. That's the underscore Misfit Nation. Subscribe and click the bell. This will keep you up to date with all of our latest episodes and all of our news. You can also find us on Electrocast Media and About Face Radio. This will keep you up to get to us and learn more about our great guests. Speaking of which, our next guest comes to to us via referral and a good conversation between the two of us is about to be had. So welcome to Misfit Nation, Cindy Adams. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Glad to be here. Awesome. Glad we're able to connect, even though we had a little hiccup yesterday, (laughs) but we're back together today. Yeah. So Cindy, like I told you in the pre-show, I'd like to introduce my guest. I didn't have a lot on you, so I'd love for you to just give us some background and let us know more about you. So the audience and the Misfit Nation can get to know you better. All right. Well, I spent most of my career at the University of Connecticut as a professor. And I'm a psychologist, so I was teaching the human side of patient care to future health professionals. They could deal with depression. They could deal with loss. They could deal with all the things that are part of the human condition when you're going through health problems. And I enjoyed that very much. And I also had a private practice part time through all the time I was at the university and then continued that when I retired. But there was a book I wanted to write um, about my mother-in-law's family. Uh, They had been in Slovenia, which is part of was part of Yugoslavia when World War Two broke out. And there were six kids that came of age just as Hitler was flying over the Alps right at them. Uh, They have a unique story. Each one of them kind of went in a different direction. Each one of them went through different, very harrowing things. They were certainly very anti-Nazi, very anti-communist. But one uncle ended up spending his four years pretty much of active duty in a POW, Nazi POW camp. And so I get very into all of their stories, separate and then together, uh, but especially his. And that's why I wrote this book uh, called The Red Toque, which means a red hat. It enters into the story, if, if you read it, uh, Love and Loss in the Time of Tito, because Tito ended up taking over 
governance of their country because of some flukes in how the communists appeared to serve the um, the allies during that war and all that went along with that. But because he suffered so much and because of all that the soldiers, Americans and the, the those who were, had their lives lost that were both civilians and Americans lost, um, I wrote this book and am giving uh, a large portion of the proceeds to wounded warriors. Wow, that's awesome. Awesome uh, journey you've been on. Uh... UConn, great school to be at, great school yeah. to be education from, and of course, uh, be a professor there. So you just threw that out like it was a little nugget, UConn, uh, UConn University of Connecticut. That's a great well, school. Well, like basketball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On both sides of the ball, too, for a long time, both men's and women were, were very good. Uh, Gino is a great coach up there for the women. He sure is. Uh, I'm sure he's thinking about his uh, next part of his career, soon needing to spend time with his grandkids and just relax after a while. But I don't know what he'll do after basketball. I don't know, know either. We know what you're doing now and the psychology, depression, that's big on our show. Uh, so a lot of our listeners uh, suffer from PTSD or some form of trauma uh, that caused them to have depression and go through, like we, if you heard in the intro, the darkness. And, and I did, yeah. We lose uh, 22 veterans a day now due to that, oh. that problem. And that's part of why we started the show, to try to stop that and having experts like yourself to come on. And also, talk, I want to talk about your book, too, so that's an amazing journey as well. But... As you sit and watch uh, what's going on with the veterans right now, do you think there's a, I know there's not one, just one tool to help every person. There's not one, one magic uh, potion to help each person, but is there, what tri tips would you give veterans that are going through the struggle right now to maybe fight through it? Absolutely. And I have, I have worked in this area um, hands-on and the number one thing, and you stress it in your commercial is don't take a permanent solution for a temporary problem. And that's as, as a psychologist, what I always say to people, if you commit suicide, we can't help you. We can't fix it. But if you just hang on, that's why psychologists and psychiatrists are always against suicide because there's no going back. And yet we know there's a fix if you hang on. Sometimes it's medication. Sometimes it's getting off substances that are abuse. You you abuse a substance and it wipes things out for a while and you feel good for a while, but it doesn't last and it only makes it worse in the long run. So we have to work as a team on many angles: family life, you know, behavioral counseling, um, but the the counseling that re involves medications or getting off of certain things is essential and socialization there's nothing like as happy as a veterans group when they get together i think i love seeing it especially the older guys really because you know they they've finally gotten through much of that depression and they have the pride okay. and i think the pride is very worth waiting for if these younger guys could just hang on. Um, and it, it may be that the wars are a little worse now. I don't know that they could be than World War I or though all the way through, but it, it, when you come home, you don't feel that you're a hero perhaps, and, and you are. You served your nation. And um, when my dad was in World War II, uh, of course I didn't know him at that time. I was born later, thank goodness. but. Um, Everything he talked about the rest of his life, and he lived a long time, um, began with when I was in the service. <laughs> and it, it was uh, almost comical, but he was so proud of it. And also it was the most meaningful thing he'd ever done. You know, you can sell houses and insurance, but does that mean the same to you as when you were out there fighting or working for your country? So there's a lot to be proud of. Definitely. And uh, when I sit and talk with my dad now, he's uh, 82 now. He'll talk about his time in the service. He was between wars. So he was uh, between Korea and Vietnam. So that's where his age group fell. So he served four years in there. Same time Elvis served. He was in Germany at the same time wow. as Elvis. But he always talks about his time in service and the things that he went through just in them four years. And it it's still picture perfect memories. And the stories haven't changed in my whole life that he's been telling me. And he's part of the reason I joined the Army. So those stories really helped me to gain that confidence to go make a career of the army and stay with it. 
That's great. That's a great story. So I, I enjoyed having that time with him and all his buddies would tell me all their stories and from their service too. Like I was just this little sponge that could absorb everything, but they wouldn't tell anyone else. So I, I just accepted it and kind of kept it in my head, never wrote anything down. And looking back now, I wish I wrote a lot of things they told me down because that it would have helped me in my career and maybe in my creative side now. Well, if you want to write a book, you find that if you start to write those memories, at least this is what happened for me, more of it comes out as you put down a memory. Oh, you think of this and then that. And, and pretty soon you can piece together fairly accurately things that happened a long time ago. But when you heard them, they were very salient. They meant a lot. They were maybe they surprised you. Maybe you were in awe. But if you if you write it down and start now, it's not too late to get a lot of that. Exactly. In Definitely. my opinion. <laughs> you're right. And like when like you said, when you're writing a book, you have to do some reach back, especially like you did yours based off the, your family. So you had to reach back and talk to each member or or all of them together. And you find out more things and more little webs that come out and you find more and more and more. So I'm sure this is what happened when you were writing uh, the Red Toque. Uh, that's an awesome way to learn more about your family history, but also put it on paper. Well, it, it was a little bit sad that I waited too long to actually speak to many of them. But they had children alive and I had talked to some of them and I had some of it written down. And I also did a lot of research about that time and the times before them that had led up to them. So I had to learn more about World War I before I could write about World War II. Okay. And uh, you put it all together and um, then you get some people who are still alive to, to give you an opinion and some real historians and it, it helps a lot. So it's not a perfect true story. It is a novel, it's historical fiction. I call it that because I couldn't possibly know the conversations that I put into making this a story. But as much as humanly possible, it follows the truth about the wars and where those people in my story actually went and how how they got through things. Uh, while you were writing, did you get a chance to go visit uh, into Europe and see the, any of the sites where your family was from? Yes. Um, just to segue quickly, my dad met my mother during the war in Italy. Oh, wow. So I, I have an Italian war bride mother. <laughs> then my husband's wa uh, mother is also a war bride from Slovenia. So I had been to Italy many times because of my family of origin, but and lots of cousins over there and everything. But but my husband and I had never been to Slovenia, which is just a few hundred miles away. It's much harder to get to, though, because it's not as popular a tourist destination. It should be. It's beautiful. But anyway, we did go over, even though it was during COVID. We had that third shot, which was the frosting on the cake at that point. And they welcomed us, although generally they didn't want anyone in the country. But when they saw we had so many shots, they let us in. <laughs> and we found uh, their gravesite of his grandparents that we hadn't known where it was. We actually stayed with a family. They rented apartments that the grandmother of the home said, oh, I know of that family. And she had been born. Uh, the year that many of them were just the younger people were just leaving, but she knew the family. She knew that the grandfather of my husband had donated his farm to the church when he died and they had made a cemetery there. And that's where, that's where they were buried in, in his farmland, which was kind of ironic, but we kept stumbling into coincidences like that. They were unbelievable. A cousin, was here and hadn't changed the name. And, you know, people called us and said, yes, we're related. And the word got around. It was, it was really great. That's outstanding. Yeah. I'm sure you met a lot of uh, great cousins and people who just wanted to talk to you at that point. So, yeah, I knew this person that was part of your family. And I wanted, I got this story about him. Yes. And uh, after we left the country, we still got phone calls um, kind of pushed 
over from this family we had been staying with, they said, oh, we ran into this woman. She says, you was your mother-in-law's best friend. And, and so we continued to receive contacts. In fact, there's been so much enthusiasm for the book over there that I'm currently in the process of getting it translated to Slovenian, which oh, wow. is its own unique language. Even though it's a small country, I think it will be a very popular book there. And uh, we'll see. I hope they, that they will read more about themselves because some of this book wasn't talked about, even though it happened there, because of Tito. Uh, the communists were so anti the truth when it came to their heavy handed doings. You know, as we're finding hidden bodies in Ukraine now, people had been blown up and attacked and civilians left in poor ways. At the end of World War II, anyone who wasn't on the side of the communists was subject to terrible horrors. And, you know, people were murdered in huge numbers and the bodies were left in old mines and in mountains. And some people witnessed this, but they were so terrified of the retaliation that they never spoke of it. Even when Tito died in 1980, they still wouldn't dare to talk about it. Communists were still in charge till 1990. And it's only been a little bit since then that some of these folks who witnessed the crimes were talking. So this is probably the first book written by an American that talks about this stuff openly. A few Yugoslavians, Slovenians have dared to, but, you know, it's the first one, I think. Well, it's, it's always good to be the, the first of anything, especially when you yes. have that many people giving you input into it. And you're right, the, the anyone who spoke out against the, anyone on the Eastern Bloc communist regime from 1945 on until, like you said, 1990 and beyond, were, they were, were basically tor tortured or killed on the spot and, and for years to come. And families had to go in hiding. Families were separated because of this and it took a long time to get back together. I'm glad you understand that because in the places I've discussed the book, there are people that one woman came up to me and she said, I always knew there was the communists were bad, but until you told this story, I didn't understand what they did or why. And I thought, my gosh, it's a different world, isn't it? Yes. You know, it's a different world. But yeah, it's a lot of naivete about what they're like. Yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of it comes from studying, I guess, uh, reading a lot of military history, a lot of history books helped me out to learn. And of course, visiting other countries really helps when you see things from the other side of it, not just from what we see here or what we is portrayed on TV here. You can see things, look at it personally. So, wow, this was really bad here. Or these people really went through a lot to, to get where they are today. And I'm glad a lot of those countries are prospering now or trying to prosper now. Yes, they're doing much better. Although who knows what's going to happen next over in Eastern Europe, you know, things are tough. It's a it's frightening, a, yeah. A box I like to call it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you said alluded to earlier, uh, uh, one of your relatives was a POW in a German uh, POW camp. Yeah, uh, a Nazi camp. Were you able to talk to that person, or was it one of their, uh, I guess, uh, relatives or? Offspring? He he's one of the key people in the book. Okay. And uh, the red, <laughs> I don't know how it's the opposite yeah. of what I the red toque. Anyway. Uh, his story. Oh, thank you. Oh, there you go. Giving me a little more camera. Whoops. There you go. There you go. We got okay. it. Anyway, the, the red tube love and loss in the time of Tito. Awesome. Um, he, he is no longer living. They, you know, World War II was a long time ago. And he, what he went through um, is a big part of the story. So this is sort of a hesitation on my part as a spoiler alert. I don't want to, if you read the book, there's some real suspense in it, several places, but especially about how he leaves the prison camp and what happens next. Um, one of the sisters in the family is actually trying to cross the Atlantic Ocean in the height of the war. And her group of boats is torpedoed by the Nazis. Um, and this, that story and this one are 
are very suspenseful. Plus, the romance wasn't always um, wonderful over there either. There was quick decisions made. Sometimes they were happy. Sometimes they weren't. Sometimes disappointments. You know, the, the book tries to tell the story of these six young people as it really happened. And um, that's outstanding. Well, uh, thank you. And with the suspense angle to multiple stories in there, keeps the reader involved and makes them want to turn that next page or the next chapter to get to that part where they want to see what happens to person A or person B. Yeah, I think, uh, thank you. I think it is a page turner. I think it's a, a story that many people are loving. It's gotten quite a bit of publicity in Europe, but then they can't buy it in their language. So <laughs> I'm working on changing that. Yeah. And uh, you can uh, find it here at all book sales or book sellers, or is it just Amazon? or Barnes Amazon is the only place right now, um, but Amazon has it easily. And I have a website if you don't find it on Amazon because I, you know, Cynthia Herbert Adams or Cynthia Adams may easily show up. But sometimes on Amazon, it doesn't show up as easy as other days. But my website is simple. If you go to your www.getbooksbycindy.com, just getbooksbycindy.com and you'll get this kind of the spreadsheet of the books I've written and each one has the term buy this book underneath it. If you press on that button, you'll go immediately to Amazon. No price change, just the same. But and the paperback for the Red Toque, of course, will help wounded warriors if you buy it. That's outstanding. And Wounded Warrior Project uh, was a uh, vital in my uh, exit from the military. When I came out of the military, they helped me out a lot with my mental health and uh and helping me to find work and stuff when I came out. I had a, a year that it took me to find work. Wow. So it, it was a long uh, journey for me, but they, they stayed with me the whole time and pushed wow. me to, to where I am now. And uh, I'm always thankful for them. And they sent me and my wife on a retreat together. And that really helped us as well. And that's when I came back from that retreat and found my first job after 365 days. Wow. Well, that's quite a journey. Yes. But, uh, I'm glad that that they follow through that they don't just say well you've had six weeks goodbye oh that, no they're no. all over you <laughs> that's great that's wonderful so it's been a great chatting with you uh, learning a little more about you than i knew 30 minutes ago obviously <laughs> <laughs> maybe than you ever wanted to know but anyway <laughs> no this is great uh well. you, you said this would be you were well worth it and i think you are well worth it <laughs> I'm probably going to look up this book later and probably suggest it to the, uh, our neighborhood has a book club. I'll suggest it to them to do that. So the ladies have something to read and chat about. Well, I'd be very month. honored if you do that. I just put your website up on right underneath the screen there so people can see it. Oh, thank you. So hopefully I got that right. Get books by Cindy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I you know do weird fingering. Get books by Cindy.com. That's it. You're so, very good. Thank you. Okay. So you gave tips on uh, depression and psychology. How about tips on writing a book? You, you just did it, and uh, obviously it's doing well. Uh, what tips would you give an author as they're trying to get their book going and maybe be successful at it? Okay, I'd be happy to help anyone. Um, first, you need the idea. What is it you want to write about? It can be uh, based on a true story. But it can also be based on other things that have been of interest to you, just real interest. But they say, always write about what you know. So, for example, if you were a plumber and you thought, well, who, who maybe who wants to read a book about plumbers? Don't think about it that way. Think about the unique skills and insights you have and how you can make a book authentic by talking about the issues that come up. But then you could have a plumber find or discover something very interesting and take off on that and make a mystery, if you follow me. Um, when I was uh, doing my doctorate, I used to love to read Stephen King and <laughs> because it was such uh, a diversion from studying, you know what I mean, <laughs> and statistics and all of that. And uh, it took me away and I enjoyed the retreat. And as a younger kid, I had loved reading Edgar Allan Poe because 
there was always, you know, a little fear in there that you had to overcome to even finish the book and a surprise. So my first novel was a horror story. And I, I wrote a book about New England horror based on old houses that my husband and I had restored. And as I lived in those old houses, I would almost get this connection with who had been there in the past and who had trod on these, you know, worn floors. And there was even a, um, a gravestone in the patio of one of the houses and it had a name on it and it was a kid's gravestone. And that bothered me for a long time. It stayed in my mind. So I used these things to make a story out of. You have to have a little imagination if you want to write a novel. And you have to take things that are you understand and that are real, and then you have to go further. So you make something pop out of what was there, and then it becomes something else. Um, but in my mind, the best thing to do is to just write. Don't sit around blocked. Start writing. and when you write and if you start describing a character and make the character as rich as you can talk everything about this person and then give the character a little voice pretty soon they they lead you somewhere they know where they need to go or they know how they need to act if you put them in a dilemma the plumber's rushing to his next job uh he gets a flat tire as he looks up he sees that the smoke coming from a house, he has to do something, you know, give him something heroic to do or make something outstanding help happen where he has to help or where he gets a chance to take a lot of money that he never dreamed he'd ever have. I mean, I'm not saying do this in real life, but you can do it in fiction. You can live through that kind of uh, excitement without getting in trouble. <laughs> you're going to get trouble <laughs> yeah and have another reader have make sure somebody you trust is reading for you give you feedback and not somebody who's just going to say oh that's great because they love you you need honest feedback so you can improve a writer's group helps many people they find four or five other folks that are about like they are or maybe a few a little bit beyond you sit down once a week and show them what you've written embarrassing or not and get feedback. It, it's a big help. It's all great tips. I, I actually used my daughter to edit my first book. Oh, great. That was probably the worst three months of my life having her edit for me, but it turned out well in the end. <laughs> well, what was the book? It's a 13 step guide to success. It's a basically a, how to be common sense, how to be a better human. Wow. Well, yeah. that's lovely. And she helped me uh, make it. So it didn't sound like I was talking. It sounded like I was writing so <laughs> she said that's my biggest flaw so. <laughs> well you you must have a good relationship with your daughter i do now yes now that i'm out of the military <laughs> oh okay <laughs> okay yeah, since I, was, I was gone a lot when she was young so when i that's got out hard. It, it had us we got connected really well when she published her book right out of high school i went on a book tour with her that, wow it, that made us grow closer together and what did she write the unexpected the unexpected. I, I Monica. Huh. And that's on Amazon as well. Okay. Well, then I have some more things to buy. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm glad to help you. <laughs> My husband will shoot you, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I can bob and weave. I'm all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Cindy, this, right. been, this has been great chatting with you. Uh, thanks again for coming on. And uh, I look forward to checking out the Red Toque and hopefully getting the, the book club to jump on it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the help, and you're a wonderful host. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. Bye-bye. Thanks for checking us out and being a part of the Misfit Nation. Don't forget to visit our website at themisfitnation.com. It's themisfitnation.com to catch up on all of our episodes and also to get some of that great Misfit Nation gear. As always, be humble, stay hungry, and keep hustling because we are 